Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mork, speaker, author, inventor, board certified orthopedic surgeon, committed to practicing endoscopic spinal surgery exclusively in the past 13 years. Over the, after performing thousands of cases with the use of the laser, I'd like to talk about five myths that surround the use of the laser while performing endoscopic spinal surgery. Laser spine surgery, five myths and truths. Laser myth number one, the laser is experimental in the use of spine surgery. This is simply not the case. The Holmium laser is FDA approved for use in orthopedics in the spine since the 1980s. And it's Medicare approved for, to treat painful lumbar discs as an outpatient. And getting Medicare approval for a surgical procedure is no small feat. The use of the laser in spine surgery has generated lots of controversy. And I think this is the case for several reasons. First, the laser is costly, maintenance is expensive, and a laser fiber must be used after each surgical case, so cost is a factor. Secondly, most spine surgeons were never trained to operate through a tube with a diameter of one half inch or less. The typical spine surgery incisions are larger and the patients are under general anesthesia. So the benefits of the laser may not seem obvious to the typical spine surgeon. I cannot argue with any of the above, but my point is if a procedure can be performed through an incision, more comfort and less soft tissue disruption and get the same outcome as a more invasive procedure, I, then I will take the smaller incision any day. The laser is a helpful tool that can be effective, but it must be used properly and for the correct indications if the best results are to be obtained. I am unaware of any prospective papers that compare procedures with and without the use of the laser for the treatment of stenosis or facet syndrome or sacroiliac joint syndrome. And I have used the laser in the treatment of all of the above. Myth number two. The laser is the primary tool for the treatment of bony spinal stenosis. The truth is that the laser is a tool that can be very useful when performing certain types of spine surgery, although it may not be the primary tool to solve the problem. A necessary requirement to performing spine surgery safety, safely is great visualization. And this means that all bleeding must be under control. The smaller the tube used and the more minimally invasive, the more critical the vision is. The main benefit of using the laser in a small tube is that it doesn't take up much room and can deliver a very powerful beam of energy, which includes heat, to heat up the soft tissues and coagulate the bleeders. This heat generates its effect because of the water content of the soft tissues. The soft tissues just shrink back or go up in smoke and vaporize when hit with the beam of light. The beam is very small, can be accurately aimed at a specific target, particularly uh, small capillary bleeders without injuring nearby tissues. This type of accuracy is critical in a tight space or when using a small tube to perform spinal surgery. The main tools that relieve bony spinal stenosis are mechanical bone cutting instruments. This is because bone doesn't respond that well to heat from the laser and bony stenosis is usually quite thick. In my opinion, the laser is the best way to control the soft tissues and the soft tissue bleeding to visualize the areas that need to be decompressed, especially when using a small tube. In many ways, the laser replaces electrocautery and it allows the use of the smallest tube possible to perform the surgery safely. The smaller the tube, when performing surgery on your spine, the less pain, the less scar tissue, the less pain pills needed, a shorter recovery, and the more likely it can be performed as an outpatient. <laughs> Myth number three, the big benefit of the laser is its healing qualities. No, the main benefit of the laser are its heating qualities. The laser is able to heat vaporize and coagulate soft tissues, including scar tissue, while operating in a very small space. The laser can almost eliminate the need for electrocautery when doing spinal surgery, which is good sometimes, because some people are quite sensitive to electric current when surgery is being performed under conscious sedation. Another benefit rarely mentioned is how helpful the heat from the laser is in revision spine surgery, where there's a lot of scar tissue wrapped around spinal nerves. These spinal nerves cannot be seen since they're wrapped in the scar tissue 
and the scar tissue wrapped around them makes them difficult to see. If the laser is aimed at the scar tissue from a short distance, it will warm the scar tissue and give the patient a sense of warmth in the arm or leg if a nerve is nearby. This is another reason that I like conscious sedation with the use of the laser, especially when performing revision spine surgery. The patient could help me avoid injury and solve their problem. Myth number four, the laser works just as well on all disc herniations. This is not true. Once a, disc has, once a disc fragment is formed inside the disc, the question becomes where will the disc fragment go? If the fragment stays inside the disc confines, then the laser might be helpful. The laser beam travels in a straight line only, and it can only be aimed directly at a disc fragment in front of it, or to create a space adjacent to the disc fragment for the fragment to fall back into. In this case, we're looking at the, the laser aimed directly at a disc fragment in front of us which is perfectly well visualized through the tube. And just, it just vaporizes just portions of it. A disc fragment can also migrate out of the confines in the disc into the spinal canal or lose complete contact with the disc and become a sequestered fragment. When this happens, the majority of the fragment may not be seen directly. If it cannot be seen directly, it is not safe to use the laser, since the laser beam does not travel around corners. A fragment that is moved outside the confines of the disc may be in contact with spinal nerves causing leg pain, and these fragments are often sizable and difficult to see in their entirety. They need to be teased away. Now here's an example of one that needs to be teased away from the spinal nerves and grabbed with some type of grasper. The laser alone would never be sufficient to get this out. The, uh, the complete removal of a good size extruded or sequestered disc fragment with the laser alone would be very difficult, if not impossible, from a technical and safety point of view. Here's an example of a fragment being removed from the spinal canal, but does require the use of a grasper. A laser would not be adequate to, uh, to, do, to accomplish this. as can be seen here. And this is a really good sized disc fragment, by the way. That tube is almost a half an inch in diameter. Laser myth number five. The most critical component of spine surgery is the use of the laser. Probably not. Remember, the laser is a tool, and how this tool is used is an important part of the process. So experience with this tool is very important. I have used the laser in thousands of surgeries, almost all performed under conscious sedation. I have read many review articles about the laser, but none talk about its benefits in revision spine surgery because very few people have used it to do revision spine surgery under conscious sedation. Although the laser is a necessary part of the surgeries that I perform, the most critical component of a successful spine surgery is a correct diagnosis, which is another topic for discussion. The use of the laser alone will not be enough. It requires experience and sometimes a lot of experience on this part of the surgeon you choose to do your surgery. Hey, thanks for looking at this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up or share it on Facebook or leave me a comment in the comment box. If you have other questions, please visit me at drtonymork.com. And thanks again for looking at this. Appreciate it.